Hey guys and welcome to a new news episode. So as you all know, yesterday was the anniversary event from Niantic. Uh, it went from 11 a.m. till 5 p.m. Uh, which honestly I think was kind of a short time. We can see here um, what the uh, quests were. Uh, I think especially the last one was considered tough by some people uh, as winning a gym battle. Defeating a team go rocket grunt and win a raid uh, were not the easiest task, especially if you are in lockdown. Uh, winning a raid, I guess, is possible with a remote pass. But uh, defeating, uh, uh, doing a gym battle, winning a gym battle, if you are not living next to a gym and you're not allowed to go outside, it's going to be a tough story, right? So uh, personally, I don't understand why they didn't make it a uh, special research story that you could just finish at any time uh, without it having to be limited. I mean, it's supposed to be a Niamhic birthday event, right? It's supposed to be uh, something fun, something to celebrate. So why not make it uh, a special research that can be completed by anyone at any time? Anyway, they chose for this uh, way to do it. Um, you can see that there were a couple of rewards. There was some dust to be gained and a couple of items, just a star piece, lucky egg, incubator and uh, incense. Uh, and of course, uh, some uh, charged, a charged gem and a uh, fast gem. So it were some decent rewards if you were able to complete it in time. Then we know that the upcoming spotlight hours are going to be Pikachu, uh, another Pikachu, then Shepard and Duskull. Uh, as we know by now, Pikachu uh, is most likely going to be shiny obtainable as we saw from a data mine uh, where we saw Raichu as well. So most likely both Pikachus will be uh, shiny available with the possibility to evolve them to Raichu as well. We have uh, an article here from Pokemon Go Up about the top five upcoming Gen 5 Pokemon. Number one is Black Kyurem. Uh, it's going to be the strongest uh, dragon type. And then we have to say the uh, strongest non-mega dragon type because uh, uh, both the uh, Garchomp and the, uh, let's see what else do we have, uh, Rayquaza, they are both going to be stronger. But of course, Black Kyurem uh, can be used at any time once you have maxed it and you won't be limited to a uh, Hauer hourly window of when uh, when you do have the mega so that's a really strong pokemon that's coming up of course we know that we have the normal kyurem already so maybe you already got a bunch of candies ready Londorus terian so we have the uh, Londorus, but we have the other uh, version of them we got the incarnate versions at the moment the uh, terian forms are yet to come this is the uh, ground Londorius form and it's going to be very strong. Um, it will have uh, strong moves as well. Let's see, it's got Earth Power, which is one of the strongest uh, moves to 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 get. Um, going to Fall Corona, it's going to be both strong as a Bug and Fire type. Um, whenever that comes out, we have Zoroark, which is going to be very strong as a Dark type attacker, uh, especially because it got a great moves that was Snarl and Foul Play. So we've got a bunch of strong dark types already. Uh, but some of those strongest dark types lack this moveset of Snarl and Foul Play, which is the best moveset. Zoroark should be getting it, um, as they know from the main series, as they've probably found in the code. And then finally we have Thunderous Therion. And this is the electric version, uh, the Therion version, of course. So you can see there's a big uh, attack set, 295. And um, the only problem with this... Pokemon is that at the moment, uh, from what they've gathered from the code, it cannot get Wild Charge. Uh, it does learn a move in the main series, so it would make sense that it would uh, uh, that it would get Wild Charge in the future. But at the moment, it is not uh, in the code found as its move set, and that's what doesn't make it the best uh, Electric type when it comes out. However, if it does get Wild Charge in the future, it's going to be even stronger than Zekrom. So those are some of the interesting Pokemon that are yet to come uh, from Gen 5, so we could expect them uh, to drop soon as raid bosses, honestly. We have a meta-analysis here from GoHub about Tyranitar, and yeah, it just talks about several ways to use uh, Tyranitar in the Go Battle League, uh, in raids against Team Go Rockets. We can see uh, what it is weak against, and what it's strong against, the stats, and uh, we can see Mega Tyranitar here as well, which has an incredible CP of 5,347 when that gets released. 
and it's just going to be very uh, you can see it's still very bulky it is still a high defense and HP while dealing massive damage so it will be a beast in a lot of ways that you can use it you can use it in the uh, well maybe you can use it in the Gobet League if that ever is allowed at the moment it's not allowed but against Team Go Rockets for example Tarantar is already incredibly useful and having the Mega version would just make it uh, so easy to beat the Team Go Rocket Grunts um, thinking about something like a Snorlax Team Go Rocket Grunt is going to be very easy with Mega Tyranitar moving on we have a couple of reddit posts uh, here we can see somebody who is rank 9 and he is paired up against a rank 8 player so it seems that um, okay so normally you would assume that you are only going to be ranked against uh, the same kind of rank opponent right so you would expect rank 8s against rank 8s and rank 9s against rank 9s but the thing is that even though you're rank 8 uh, you could already have a high uh, rating the rating does not show because you only uh, get shown the rating once you are rank 9 but in the background it is probably still playing so that means that they probably have around the same rating uh, the only difference is that rank 9 knows precisely what this rating is while rank 8 doesn't then there is a weird glitch here where somebody waited in the queue for 30 minutes and was eventually ranked against a rank 1 opponent I mean if you are rank 9 and you are playing against the top players I mean he must be somewhere at the very top which is also why it takes so long to get a queue uh, so if you get a rank 1 player that's obviously going to be very bad for this rank 1 there's no way he's going to uh, defeat him well that would be pretty epic actually that's a weird glitch it looks like Niantic forgot about New Zealand again a post here by Finchie uh, New Zealand uh, so apparently it took them 47 minutes to activate the anniversary event which was supposed to go live at 11.00 uh, but it went live at 11.47 when Niantic finally realized that they were too late for New Zealand uh, unfortunately this is happening often to New Zealand that they are that they uh, yeah the Niantic makes mistakes mistakes with the time zones there um, they didn't miss out too much on the balloons they got one the moment the event went live and another one at 12 so that's good talking about the balloons uh, we were in fact right that they are uh, coming every three hours so basically like we had for a couple of weeks and then a couple of days now they were every six hours but during the event they were three, they were every three hours again which led to some confusion in the uh, community um, so yeah moving on we have a verification that Moltres can be done solo so here you can see a trainer who has uh, soloed this Moltres raid so we can see he is alone using a lot of Rampardos which is very strong uh, very strong Pokemon to use and he was able to just defeat it in time so terrain, uh, that means that Moltres can be soloed so that also means that obviously Moltres is not one of the difficult uh, uh, legendaries and if you have two strong players you should be able to take it down as a duo uh, quick note here that he actually managed to get a 100% here that's incredible it's also possible to solo it if you use a Mega Blast Toys only but here they are using the same trick as they have done with Mega Beach before which is if you uh, Mega Evolve um, but if you have a rank 1 and you max it to uh, uh, level 40 okay so you have a level 1 uh, Blast Toys and you max it to level 40 and immediately after that you Mega Evolve it then it does get in fact uh, a bigger boost than it should be because of a glitch and uh, therefore it gets a huge CP and it is very much overpowered so we can see somebody here who has attempted a solo with uh, Blastoise only so that means that once the Blastoise faints he's going to rejoin as you can see here his health coming back he has to rejoin with the Blastoise and he was also able to take it down uh, just in time here very close but it is possible with the glitch to solo a Moltres with a Blastoise then moving on we have one article that I want to show this is about legacy moves it is from Game Press we can see that a lot of people are interested in this article 383 comments uh, with a bunch of emojis here when we go to the article we can see that it is quite lengthy and it talks about all the ways that uh, legacy moves uh, function and why they they just aren't good 
Um, so it basically talks about several ways that legacy moves uh, sh yeah, shouldn't exist because it creates an unhealthy situation for the community where they are constantly have a fear of missing out, which is called FOMO in short. So basically it means that people do not dare to make investments because they know that it's possible that after their investment, uh, Niantic is going to uh, have a new move for the Pokemon, which makes your investment useless. And this is just one of the many ways that people are uh, fearing basically to, uh, <laughs> to miss out, to miss out. And uh, it's a bad thing. So that's clearly explained here in this article. I would advise you to read it yourself because I'm not going to write, I'm not going to read through the whole thing here. As you can see, that it would take a long time. Um, but yeah, it brings up an interesting question. Uh, is this the future for Pokemon Go where we constantly have legacy moves? And they're also talking about the fact that it would cost you uh, around $12 to just get an uh, elite, uh, to use an elite TM to get the right moveset. And especially in some formats, they are talking about a certain uh, Ferocious Cup, I believe it is called, where people are using the Sylph, uh, Sylph Cup, I believe. They had to get an Umbreon in a certain league because it was very strong. But uh, if they could not get the uh, Legacy move, which was the community they move for uh, EV, uh, less resort. A res less resort is very important in that league to get on the Umbreon. And so basically the people who did not have less resort were lacking behind. So they're talking about the fact that it would be uh, pay to win as people need to use elite TMs to get that uh, special moveset. And well, not only is it pay to win, but it's pay a lot to win, right? Because 12 bucks for one elite TM is just very expensive. Uh, as they are also saying, um, yes, you can get a couple of free ones, but since the release of the Go Battle League, there were at least 15 legacy moves added while you could only get three uh, elite TMs. So obviously that is not a healthy comparison there. And they're also bringing up the, uh, the problem that some people uh, have great skills, but they are simply limited because they don't have the, com the right movesets. So let's say people came to Pokemon Go later and they don't have community movesets on their starters, on Venusaur, on Charizard, on Blastoise. Without those community movesets, you're going to be at a big disadvantage, no matter how good your skills are, no matter how good you understand the game. So there's a lot of problems that legacy moves bring with them, all clearly explained in this article. Again, I would advise you to read it. And I hope that this uh, article is going to reach Niantic and they would come to with some solutions, as this article is going to state some solutions themselves as well here. Okay, so that's everything I want to share for today. Uh, don't forget that uh, tomorrow is going to be the first Pikachu with the World Cap uh, Spotlight Hour. And of course, on Wednesday, it's going to be Moltres uh, Spotlight Hour uh, with that Sky Attack moveset, which is also a legacy move. All right, when more information comes out, we'll make a new episode, and I will see you then.